Hey folks, it's Tommy Frugal Prepper. I just thought I'd do a video, kind of an update of what's going on. It's been kind of busy. I'm out here just trying to clean up the garage while I'm waiting on parts for a car. So I'll show you what's going on. So I got this uh, 91 LeBaron. Uh, this is the convertible one. It needs brakes really bad. Um, and so all of the brake parts are special order. Um, because it has different, it has a front and rear disc, um, which was an unusual combination. And it's convertible. <laughs> um, so it takes a special size rotor it has a different size hat than the normally smaller rotors that they sometimes put on these so um rotors were like two weeks out and uh so i took the old rotors down turned them got them to turn got everything out of them just within uh, minimum specs so um we're we're good to go there but this this old girl is pretty old but she's pretty solid underneath i mean she doesn't have a lot of a, a ton of rust uh, surprisingly but uh, she did have uh, this problem which was the uh, brake hose has busted sometime and somebody put a bolt and a hose clamp in this one and of course that caused the rear caliper to get all rusted inside and seized up too so I had to a special order uh, the rear brake pads are fine on this we're gonna reuse those um, we're going to replace the front brake pads because somebody put the wrong size ones on. They put them on for the bigger rotor. If you can see this lip here, <laughs> that was wearing inside the rotor. So I got the right size brake pads coming. And, uh, and um, but those are only like, you know, a week out at the most. Um, so they'll be here like Tuesday or Wednesday. But uh, rotors were like two weeks plus out. And I could only find one place that had them. So... We're going to reuse these rotors, replace that caliper, replace that brake hose, uh, put new pads on the front, and reuse the back pads, um, which were just replaced, but the rotors were really bad. So that should get this old girl stopping correctly. Then we'll take it on a test drive, see if there's anything else major wrong with it. Uh, I think the, the lady just got a new job, and it's out of town so she's gonna have to take it on the highway and uh, she took it to another place and said oh find everything that's wrong with this car and they came back with a price of thousands of dollars because it has other issues uh, it's got an oil leak um, oh. around the uh, valve cover gaskets here this is where most of that oil is coming from so I ordered a set of valve cover gaskets for it uh, other than that, it doesn't look too terribly bad. Um, and, uh, you know, then we'll drive it and see if anything shakes or knocks or rattles. or um, It's had these struts put on it at some point. Um, but we'll see if we can't get this thing going good enough to get her to work at her new job. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm just trying to clean up. It's amazing. When you get busy, the amount of trash that you just collect. <laughs> I've already filled up this bag with stuff. And uh, I got that to get rid of. I've got all of this to clean out and get rid of and organize. Just It's just been busy, a constant, one car after another. I've got more cars out here to work on. Uh, so I just, I've just been so busy, I haven't felt like doing many videos. It's just crazy. See, like, all the old brake parts and stuff are over here. This all goes down to the junkyard. I give it to them and let them have it for weight. But, you know, just fun times. So, 
Yeah, I try and try. I found a set of front rotors off a of New Yorker that were the right dimensions, but the hat was wrong. The hat was too deep on it. So, um, I'm just going to work on cleaning up, I guess. And you know, I got tools everywhere, and just everything needs organized. My mobile vehicle looks about the same. <laughs> it needs cleaned up and organized. So, <clears throat> while I'm waiting on parts, I'm just going to work on cleaning up and organizing stuff. And just, uh, it's just crazy. I need to wash shop towels, and I got to get this kerosene right here. I got another wheel hub. Alright, I better go out to the junk pile. But uh, it's amazing the amount of trash that you generate when you start working on a lot of cars. Everything comes in a freaking box. Throwing stuff over here. I should have stopped and just checked it along the way. But I did. Things that take your time. Time is money. When it comes to fixing cars, time is money. <coughs> okay, this trash bag is about full. This trash bag, we have to get another one. This computer here, I'm supposed to set up a Linux server for my church. A, I don't know, they're, they're kind of weird. I went in there to help them put my network engineering skills at work, and then they just like they don't ever follow any of my recommendations. So they had a gigabit internet on cable modem, and they decided to trade it in for fiber, and I told them not to. Now they got like 100 meg fiber instead of gigabit internet. It's just not, not good for what they need. And it's way more expensive. They just spend way more money every month than that. I found out like one of the guys tried to tell one of the elders about it. Basically threatened to fire him if he mentioned it again. I see what's going on there. Somebody's got a relative that works at internet fiber sales. <laughs> Yeah, I have a tendency, like, when people want to listen to me, they're welcome, you know, I, I welcome helping them out as much as I can, and, you know, uh, using my 25 plus years experience as a network engineer to help them out, but when they don't listen to me and they start dismissing me, um, I have a tendency to say, screw you, I can go other places and make $150 an hour to consult with them, <laughs> you know? <clears throat> and they will listen to my advice. So, I've worked on some really large projects in the past. And, uh, you know, I have a lot of experience. I probably should have just followed my instincts, which was just don't get involved and let them handle it on their own. <laughs> But I try to be nice. Those are the things that happen. Let's move this out of here. Oh, I got one right down here too that I need to learn how to use. I don't. 
bucket. Really? Empty propane tank. This trash equals about two weeks worth of work. This was all cleaned out over here a couple weeks ago. I just think it's amazing the amount of trash I generate just fixing cars. getting somewhere now I got all my lead wheel weights there to melt down into bullets so an extension cord heater which hopefully I won't need any more unless it starts snowing again a weed eater funnel more trash. There's some bright hardware that came with a caliper. That's a, I'll throw that in the toolbox and keep it in case I need it sometime. cat litter containers here I keep those um, those are where I put my used oil in so I got a couple of things of used oil to go out to <laughs> um, this big box here is from my shelves that went in the basement but uh, what I use for my trash can normally and it works really well is I get the big contractor bags and then uh, have this leaf holder and I put in there. This bag's really cool. So it's gonna be kind of a pain to get out. You can normally just kind of drag it out the side. There we go. Just tie this up. Leaf can go out. Just going to take and basically take this stuff and break it down. I guess this is seven. If you're thinking about taking this on as a side business, make sure you have a very forgiving uh, trash company. 
not one of those like two cans or four bags and that's it. You charge extra. My trash company is really good about taking extra and not charging. Um, and they're really inexpensive, so pay attention to that because you're going to generate a lot of trash. It's two weeks worth, right there. <laughs> So, yeah, before much longer, we'll have to get a dumpster or something. I'll tell you. Whew. Oh. Or find somebody with a dumpster. I'll just let me throw it in the truck and take it over there, maybe. Anyway, I'm going to carry these out to the trash pile. Finally is a beautiful day again. Man, we had some snow and crap this past weekend. It was absolutely kind of nuts. So now what I'll do is just go ahead and set up another trash bag. Just uh, kind of fun times here. I got these two springs that need to go outside to the trash pile. Those aren't going to get used again. It's just fun times. Man. <laughs> It's just amazing how disorganized this mess can get <laughs> in such a short amount of time. It's just kind of crazy. But I'll get it all cleaned up. I'll get all these shop towels in and get them washed. And uh, just basically having fun. So normally I throw all my Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
<clears throat> I'll take those inside and see if my wife can throw them in the washer. Wash them out. <clears throat> They're so cheap anymore, it's almost not even worth <clears throat> the washing them, I'll tell you. Alright, so I, I used my truck to run an errand and uh, the belt tensioner decided to seize up on it. <laughs> not just the pulley, the pulley was bad. Here. Definitely grinding. But the belt tensioner itself decided it was not going to keep any tension on the belt any longer. <laughs> it started squealing, I lost my power steering. So I just spent the last like four hours, good lord, putting a new belt tensioner and replacing all the pulleys on this guy. I got this uh, pulley right here. I don't know if you can even see down in here. I got this pulley replaced. Belt tensioner, it's all buried down in there, but every bolt every single bolt was a fighter <laughs> and then they put these uh, Torx bolts in the uh, mm. piece of skin mm. Mm, skin um, I don't know what happened to it but it's a Torx bolt that stripped out so basically I had to cut the pulley off and then get a pair of vice grips and it just came out hard the whole way. No way to really reach it. It just just a nightmare. So I just put a regular bolt back in there. But anyway, the truck's ready to go. Glad it happened today though, because I was getting ready to go to Mansfield with it tomorrow. <laughs> I would have been worse on the side of the interstate. <laughs> um, but she's good to go. Um so I didn't get my garage cleaned up as I wanted because I spent all my time doing that. But uh, my friend stopped over and he was at a local pick and pull and he found a couple of real calipers with brand new rear brake hoses. And these calipers are new. Got a little surface rust on them, but they're new. Um, on a uh, LeBaron they had. So it will fit this, I do believe. Here's the, here's the old one. That brake caliber and see if they're the same. You see, it's just like that one. Yep, it's the same. So now I have what I need to get that done. And it had brand new brake pads on it, too. So we're going to reuse those and we'll send the other ones back to AutoZone. But uh, I still have to wait on some front pads. So, because those are the wrong pads. And we're going to put the right pads back on it. But uh, I got that much, not much of that done. So that's always good. But uh, yeah, now I'm ready to go inside and relax, I think. <laughs> oh, Lord. I'm going to get my spare tire out at the shed here. Put that in the back of the truck and put a jack in there before I head to Mansfield. I might grab a toolbox out of the Buick. This is the Buick with their seized engine. Or, I don't know if it's seized yet. I've got an oil pan. We're going to try it. We're going to see if we can save it. But I don't know. But she's down right now. There's my, my spare. Tell it's got a little rust on it. Oh, come on. Come on. Oh, geez. Heavy ass thing. Oh, okay. Give me a spare tire and a jack. Oh crap. Let me just roll this thing. Just roll it. It's round and it holds air. That's all that matters, right? McDangy Bob out and check the air in there. It's laying over here. Alright. 
I'm gonna set y'all down. All right. Has the green valve cap valve cap because it had nitrogen inflation. Yeah, she's right where she should be. So we'll take that, throw her in the back of the truck here. I'll make sure I got the jack back here. I don't know if I got a jack back here. Let's take a look. I got real, you know, a trolley jack, not not the junkie factory jack. I don't even think that thing's still around. No, there's no jack back here. So I have to get one of those out of this car. I must have locked it. But anyway, I'm gonna get a jack, put in her, and take a spare tire while I'm on my way to Mansfield. Maybe uh, maybe get the toolbox out of the, the CERN and throw in here, just in case. But uh, half a million miles. Um, that's the original original belt tensioner and pulley. <laughs> the other pulleys I've replaced before. But I never replaced the uh, belt tensioner and the belt tensioner pulley. So, you can tell she was worn down. And she's grinding. She feels like a new tea. But, uh, yeah, not complaining. Half a million miles. Belt tensioner, belt pulleys. No big deal. No big deal. So, all right, I'll talk to y'all later. It's Tom and Frugal Prepper.